way we consume and share news today, it is largely rooted in social media outlets. A reason why it's crucial to look at what's being discussed online from the hottest issues of trends for our daily social media minute. We're now joined by Erica via Zoom. Good morning, Erica. Oh, we're getting radio silence from you. Let's try that again. Let's try that again. Good morning. Morning. <laughs> and now you've decided to blend with the background. That's so fun. I know. <laughs> I'm camouflaged this morning. <laughs> At least it's your favorite color. It works. Yeah, right? <laughs> All right, Erica. Thanks for joining us. Let's jump into uh, some of the buzzwords uh, trending as we speak. Uh, let's talk about the 501 restaurant. Is that our first pick of the day? Yes, it is. Um, something called the 501 Restaurant, uh, which is run by uh, the Blossom Yodra Social Cooperative, uh, way down there in Chinhe, in Gyeongsangnam-do province, uh, is proving to be a really successful model of community care. And uh, the initiative combines the efforts of... Uh, plenty of local volunteers and donations from individuals and companies. And it's been getting a lot of, um, you know, spotlight uh, in the media for all that it does for uh, the children who, well, used to go without a proper meal mm -hmm. or uh, just used to go to convenience stores mm -hmm. to, you know, have a quick bite to eat because their parents are always working and, uh uh, you know, these these children come from, you know, difficult backgrounds, basically. Mm. Now, uh, I want to talk a little bit about this uh, restaurant this morning. Uh, it's located on the ground floor of the Blossom Yeojwa Community Center in Yeojwa Dong in Chinhe Gu District. And uh, the restaurant basically welcomes all local children and youth. Uh, the center usually hosts cultural programs within the building, mm. but then transforms into this like bustling restaurant during lunch hours. I wonder how they get the food smell out after lunch because they also have to host a <laughs> cultural programs or are, are the cultural yeah. programs going to be just making me really hungry? That's all right, too. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's a brilliant idea. If you think about what a hot meal costs for any of yeah. us, we've talked about lunchflation for full grown adults. Even when we make money, it's more difficult to get a good meal yeah. for an affordable price. I wonder how the, mm -hmm. this restaurant actually came to be. You know, the restaurant uh, initially aimed to offer free meals to children from low-income families, but then it struggled to attract regular visitors uh, because of social stigma ah. uh, around receiving free food, basically. The children were embarrassed to go there, mm. uh, and the cooperative noticed this. They noticed that children were reluctant to return after a few visits, um, you know, because they felt that they were being labeled mm. by accepting these free meals. Now, to address this problem, uh, the restaurant introduced a nominal fee of 500 won, mm. per meal. And this small charge uh, not only helped maintain the children's dignity, but also promoted a sense of contribution and belonging as well. Mm. Now, this plan worked big time. Uh, more and more children began visiting the restaurant on on a regular basis it eventually grew into this uh, stigma free environment where you know these kids could enjoy lunch uh, a healthy nutritious lunch and delicious lunch regardless of their social and economic backgrounds the brilliance of the plan is it was such a yeah. small adjustment right uh, a, a, a tiny tiny price to pay uh, for a hot piping meal and mm -hmm. you, you somehow suddenly feel like it's a community and less like just literally a free meal right what that That's sounds right. like now what does that 501 meal look like you know uh it's 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 really delicious uh oh. you know they, they come with uh, you know kid-friendly uh dishes pork cutlets <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, hamburger steaks, spaghetti, pork cutlets, tonkatsu. Each meal comes with a bowl of hot rice, soup or jjigae, and four side dishes every day. You know, the, the cost of the meal might be 500 won, but the restaurant definitely doesn't compromise on quality. And, uh, uh, you know, dedicated volunteers, they prepare these wholesome meals. And, you know, they want to make sure that uh, these children get all the nutrients that they need on a daily basis. Which brings us naturally to our next question, then who pays for these meals? I mean, yeah. beyond the 501 per ticket, I mean, government funding seems essential. 
That's right. Uh, but, uh, you know, government funding doesn't always come by that easy. And this particular initiative also faced some financial challenges as well when local government funding stopped coming in. But then this is the beauty of the story. The community rallied. Uh, a local financial institution provided support. Residents donated both food and money. Mm -hmm. And uh, the collective effort of everyone enabled this restaurant to continue its mission. Now, by December 24th, the cooperative reported that it received around 50 million won in donations, which far exceeded annual operational costs. And a significant portion of these funds came from 200 30 individuals uh, with local businesses contributing as well, which means the restaurant is going to be able to extend operations during winter school vacation ah. season as well. So that's great news. I think so. It's especially cold. Uh, yeah. Let's get those hot meals uh, out there. It's kind of amazing. If there is a cause like worth getting behind, mm -hmm. the community will come together. All right. Yes. Let's move on to our second buzzword of the day. Seoul Subway to receive a first First upgrade in this brand new map, it's a first in 40 years. You know, uh, I've actually seen personally like foreign visitors coming to Seoul for the first time. They're using the subway because it's convenient and cheap. But, you know, I've seen them get a little bit flustered looking at the map of, you know, the Seoul subway because it's very complicated for first time users. Yeah. And that's why uh, the Seoul City subway map is going to receive a first design in 40 years and four decades. And the Seoul City government announced the final design for Seoul's revamped subway map on Monday. Uh, the current map has maintained its layout, its basic layout since the 1980s. Mm. You know, every time a new station added, they were added over time. But the basic design hasn't changed in the last 40 years. I don't know. I've grown so accustomed to that yeah. design <laughs> that has stuck around for four decades. But hey, they're right. trying to just make it easier for everyone. Mm -hmm. What has changed? You know, the new layout is simpler. It's more clear. Uh, subway line two, it's depicted as a circle mm. at the center of the map. Which makes subway sense. Yes, because it's Seoul's only circular line. It's a loop, right? Yeah. And uh, the design is based on the so-called octolinear layout, which was first implemented by London Underground's uh. map back in 1933. Now, the government says the new map is also going to reduce time it takes to find a station by as much as 55 percent. And also it's going to reduce the time it takes to navigate a transfer route by up to 69 percent. So not only is it easier to parse through, uh, it's going to cut everybody's time by significant amounts, which is great in a busy <laughs> city like Seoul. You know, everyone's busy. Everyone's trying to get somewhere, uh, especially during rush hour and commute hours. And we talked about how commute hours takes a great portion of our time. Yeah. All right. So it yes, should make uh, things easier. OK. Yes, exactly. The government uh, has also adjusted each subway line's shade or color to be more inclusive, to help colorblind commuters uh. easily uh, look at the map. Um, so the new map is easier to understand as the colors of subway lines are more differentiable and are classified into patterns mm -hmm. as well. So a lot of these positive changes you'll be able to see soon. Um, the latest map will appear first digitally on the screen doors of Yoido Station starting in late January next month. And uh, the map will also offer multiple languages to accommodate foreign tourists as well. Brand new year, brand new yep. subway map. Thank you very much, Erica. I'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. <laughs> if you're listening to our program using the podcast service, just a reminder that we do go live Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Korea Standard Time. So tune in and help us make the show more informative by giving us your input. See you bright and early on Good Morning Seoul.